Hi, my name is Anna Kotterweg. I'm an artist based in the Netherlands and I'm also known by my Instagram name, Gentle Blooms Art. And in my watercolor portraits, I am interested in revealing a deeper and more subtle layer of the human expression while keeping the painting light and ethereal. I think one of the biggest pain points in watercolor is probably to keep it light while still maintaining depth and dimension. I can't wait to do this class together, so let's get started. Hello everybody and welcome to another Etcher mini workshop. We are here with the wonderful Anna Kortovic who's going to be teaching us how to do these lovely, beautiful, dreamy portraits. So if you have questions for Anna, please put them in the chat in all capital letters so that I can see them better. And also I'm going to drop into the chat a link for the class PDF. And the PDF contains everything that you'll need for the class, including the reference photo, You'll also find uh, the link to the survey, all your materials and social media connections. So I'm gonna drop that into the chat right now and you can go ahead and download that. And also, um, if you stick around to the end, please do because we are going to do a little bit of a drawing for one of our paper blocks. So from here, um, I wanna let you know that today's class is streaming for free, um, but it will be taken down after the stream is over. You can still access the recording for just $7. The link will be in the chat and you can purchase it right away and watch it right away. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Anna who's gonna tell us more about what we're going to do today. Anna, take it away. Thank you, Kitty. Hi everyone. So I'm Anna Kortele. For those of you who are not, haven't met me yet, um, today we're going to paint a full tone watercolor, full tone, pastel toned watercolor portrait in a more loose style, uh, in spontaneous style with the focus on suggesting shadows, but keeping the painting light. And the main skill we will be learning is how to create depth and dimension without letting the painting grow muddy. And there are different techniques with which you can do that. Our technique will be today to uh, apply underpainting. And um, in my 30 minute demo, I already talked a little bit about underpainting. Uh, so I'm not going to elaborate too much on it right now, but during the process, I will talk a little more about it while we are painting. So um, let's start with um, the materials and what we're actually going to do. Um, this is more or less our goal, but I am always, I have a very um, spontaneous attitude in painting. I like to, let's see what our painting will bring us today. Um, this is the sketch with which we will start. I hope you can see it well. And let, let me click here. I got a some sort of notification on my computer. All right, that's all set. And um, the colors I'll be using today, uh, my palette is um, based on these colors. I might, might not even use all of them, um, but we'll see. The, the most important thing to know right now is for the underpainting, we're gonna use a cool color. And I'm going to use a mix of phthalo blue and phthalo green. If you want, if you're about to paint along with me and you don't have these colors, it's okay. You could also choose like a Prussian blue or even a cerulean blue or a um, winter green, for instance. Those, as long as the blues are cool enough and the greens as well. And you can also choose to either one of the colors, you don't even have to mix them if you feel like if you're in more blue mood or if you're in a more green mood. Um, so that's really up to you. Um, so that's for the underpainting. Then after applying underpainting, we will be um, focusing more on warmer colors for the, for the skin tone, which will be mainly a mixture of a very light yellow. Um, I'm using Indian yellow, you could also use a 
light pale cadmium yellow, for instance, and uh, mixed with quinacridone red. Um, but I think we are going to also use quite a lot of burnt shenna, because if we look at the reference photo, I'm very sorry, but I just one minute ago had a drop of water on my print, but I hope you, the material Kitty has shared with you. Um, anyway, so this is the reference photo, really nice photo of Josephine. And as you can see, um, there are lots of warm brown, reddish brown tones and shades in this picture. So I'd like to uh, focus on that too in the painting. Um, so therefore I choose to um, use some burnt shenna. If you don't have burnt shenna, you might try some Phoenician red or English red that might work as well. I might add some perlin maroon to make it a little darker and warmer. And, um, and for the really dark details, I'll add some paint gray. Those are the main colors for today. If you're painting along, I would um, advise you to use two um, water containers because we will start with a very cool wash. And, um, and after that, we will turn to the warmer colors and it's nice if you can use fresh water so the, the cool bluish water will not mix with your warmer colors. And what else? Um, my brushes. I usually mainly use, well, I actually use a lot of different brushes. Um, that's how I was trained a long time ago. And I know um, I actually would have loved to be able to paint with just one brush with a very um, small tip, like a French watercolor brush or a Chinese watercolor brush. I've never really learned that. But if you have one of those and you're, uh, you feel very comfortable with those brushes, then please go ahead, use those. I'm going to use, um, for the details, a brush zero and one. And for the uh, slightly larger areas, a round brush, four and five. And um, for the really large washes, I'll be using either a flat brush like this one. This is a one inch flat brush, um, which is like number 20, I would say. And um, I might even <laughs> use a very old brush that I've had for years, which is a really big old <laughs> brush is actually my favorite brush. It's, I think it's a number 30 um, for, for the background, but you could also use a really big flat brush. Even the one inch flat brush would really do well too. So um, I guess that's it. Um, that's so much for the materials. Of course, I will also have some paper towel to um, to lift off some some paint if I need to and um, I also sometimes use a little piece from a bigger sponge and I sometimes when I make washes I like to use the sponge to um, soak up a debris of water um, so I, you might see me using that too. You can just cut it out from any kind of sponge you have if you want to try that too. Um, yeah, I guess we are there with the materials. If, if someone has a question about materials, please let me know. We are good and, to go. Uh, so let's get back to the sketch and let's start with the underpainting. So for the underpainting, like I said, I'm going to use a bigger flat brush. And um, one of the first thing I do before I really dive into the painting 
is to look at the way in which the light is falling on the subject of the painting. So I'm taking my reference photo again. Um, so in other words, how is how the girl's face is illuminated? Where are the shadows? Where is the light? And or yet in, a, in other words, how are the values organized? And I, I explained a little bit about values in my 30 demo too. If you're really unfamiliar with values, um, values are uh, the tones of a color and dark values. You have dark values and light values and um, a whole range of values in between, which kind of reflect how much light there is reflected in that color. So if you take this very light string of hair, that's where the light is reflected very strongly. And so that we will call, we would call a high value. And in the shade, shady parts, you have this really uh, dark shadow here. That's where the light is, is really not reflected or hardly, so that would be a dark value. Um, I think in this painting, we are going to focus a lot on the middle values, actually. The darker values are pretty well pronounced in the background and here in the shadow and in the details of her face. And obviously her the light of her the light hair around her face, those are the light shadow, the light values. But if you look at the face, um, the values are very subtle. And this is often the case if you look at a, uh, a portrait or a face you, you'd like to portray. So to make that easier, I usually turn my reference photo into a black and white photo. Um, that because then you just have one color to deal with. I mean, different shades of gray, basically. And um, it's easier to define how the values are distributed. Um, and then also I have posterized this image in an app, photo app, and um, you can just download that on your phone and uh, which shows you the different values, the different tones of a color um, more uh, distinctively. So you can really see here the right side of her cheek. You can see some change, some gra gradual change from going from dark to light. So this is really, um, Important, important information for us today, especially as we are going to apply the underpainting. I guess it's kind of handy to keep um, your reference photo with us. I printed this out. It's a little, the light's a little reflected in. So I put it in plastic because I know myself, I, I kind of, uh, my, my water sometimes just drips <laughs> in places where I don't want it to drip. Anna? Yeah? Um, oh yeah, that looks good. Um, we do have a question about the, um, the app that you mentioned. Is there an yeah. that app? Yeah, I just couldn't get it. I'll look it up and I'll share it with you later. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> if you have Photoshop, Photoshop also has tools to do that. I think there are a lot of uh, apps online that you can find. Uh, yeah, it. and and but anyway, turning your photo into a simple black and white picture is already a, a great step, and you can do that with any phone. You don't even need a special app. You just use the the tools from your phone camera, and uh, as you can see here, you can already see. At, um, how a black and white photo shows um, how the tones are, um, how they relate to each other. Thank All you. right. You're welcome. So, um, yeah, let's start with the underpainting finally. I'm going to take this flat brush. And like I said before, I have this mixture of phthalo blue and phthalo green. I hope you can all see this. And I dilute my mix 
with a lot of water. Um, because the first wash is going to be very light. So diluted with how diluted it is, I will just make a first mark in the background. You see, I hope I, the camera will even pick it up. I will add a little more pigment just for the sake of the camera. So this is really light and I'm adding a lot of water. If you're painting along and, and you have a sheet of paper uh, kind of loose or not really fixed to a surface underneath, um, then maybe you'd like to um, um, limit the amount of water you use because otherwise your paper will buckle up a lot. But if you do have your paper well fixed on a board, then I would say go ahead, add lots of water to make that really uh, thin wash just for the beginning, just for marking the first values. And I'm really not looking at getting the value exactly right at this point. I'm just marking it. I'm just looking at, okay, so here the, the hair ends and the background begins. And just, so I'm just marking it with a very light, light wash. Adding a little bit here. Yes. You can see I just add and add water all the time. Like so. 